Now, let's go to Queensland, where the overzealous and controlling Palaszczuk government has embarrassed itself yet again. This time, looking to censor voices of opposition who have been quite justifiably critical of their handling of COVID-19 messaging. Enter Health Minister Yvette Dath, who wrote on Twitter, wrote to Twitter, sorry, asking them to ban opposition frontbencher Jared Belay from the platform for his tweets, which she described as, quote, undermining not only public confidence in the vaccine, but the Queensland government's rollout of the vaccine, which could ultimately lead to vaccine hesitancy and harm to Queenslanders. Now, thankfully, her bid failed and she copped a deserved whack from her state's paper. But this is a crazy move from an administration which itself tweeted anti-AstraZeneca misinformation in the heat of pa the pandemic. Yes, it was Anastasia Palaszczuk herself who spread vaccine hesitancy on social media by falsely claiming that the AstraZeneca vaccine was not safe for those under the age of 40. No wonder her state's vaccination rates are so low. And the tweet also falsely claimed that the UK government had banned people from under the age of 40 from getting it. Not true. The tweet, up here on the screen, still hasn't been deleted and is still collecting lights and shares fueling vaccine hesitancy. Even the Brisbane Times has whacked her in, refusing, in her for refusing to admit she made a mistake and then delete the tweet. So what we have here is a misdirect. Her government completely botched vaccine messaging and they are now trying to say that criticisms of Palaszczuk's false information tweets are the real fake news. Imagine the degree of arrogance and contempt for the public that you have to hold to try and get social media giants to censor your political rivals because you have lost the argument. This is something Queenslanders must not forget. Hold on to this moment and make sure they don't get away with rewriting history. Sophie, let's go straight to you. What do you make of, just more broadly, a, a sitting government asking a social media platform to censor the opposition? Jack, uh, complete and utter waste of time, uh, absolute load of rubbish. And can they concentrate on the work at hand of getting Queensland back open and back up and running for all those businesses that have been smashed during the pandemic? I find this utterly pathetic. Uh, and especially the hypocrisy when uh, Anastasia Palaszczuk, as you said, put out that tweet about AstraZeneca that was absolutely incorrect and still remains online. I mean, seriously, th do these politicians think they can be taken seriously fighting each other over what one writes on a social media account? I mean, this is just showing how out of touch they are, Jack, and how desperate they are to shut down anyone who takes them on. Evan, when I was reading about this story, it, it, it looked to me like a play out of a, a Chinese um, a government um, propaganda book where they say, oh, no, it, it, the virus came from your lab. They're accusing the opposition of doing exactly what they have done and the tweet's still up. Again, short memories. Do they really think the public are going to fall for this? Exactly. Uh, the, the opposition's comments were a bit over the top, but not nearly as over the top as Anastasia Palaszczuk and Jeanette Young's press conference trashing the AstraZeneca vaccine. I mean, you know, if, if you talk about vaccine hesitancy and the opposition, you know, creating that, uh, there's posters literally around Sydney and Brisbane of the chief health officer or former chief health officer, Janet Young, and her comments to stir up that anti-vax sentiment. So, um, you know, the fact that they've gone on to Twitter and tried to ban an elected member of parliament is just really censorious and a, a really shameful episode.